Hello, welcome to the Jazz Ranch. Hip cats, groovy chicks, and finger popping daddies. I'm your alter dominant ego man. You can call me Mr. Ego if you like. Anyway, you know, on the KH, he doesn't like me telling stories about him, but I got a good one from, oh, he's about age 25. You know, he went up to Hartford. You know, he was a banker. <laughs> and he switched to music. And by the time he got to be 25, he was got pretty good. So he was invited to go up to Hartford and play in a house rhythm section, you know, with a bass player and a drummer. And they were going to be backing up jazz celebrities that were coming in from New York. They were doing a route. They would go up to Hartford, play the club there at Delisa's, and then they'd go over to Providence. And then they'd drive up to Boston. You know, they'd do a route, you know. Anyway, so some of the great players came in, and the Cats got to play with them. People like um, Zoot Sims and... Chet Baker, J.J. Johnson, Clifford Jordan, you know, Kenny Burrell. All these cats were coming in. And Jimmy Heath, you know. Anyway, great tenor player, Jimmy Heath. Anyway, Jimmy Heath came up and he called the tune Invitation. Well, you know that tune, it's A-A-B-A. And the B section is like a minor chord, you know, 2-5-1 into minor. 2-5-1 into minor. Well, anyway, K.H. didn't know the tune that well, so he was playing 2-5-1 into major, you know. So Jimmy's playing the tune, he comes to the bridge, he goes, KH plays a major chord. Jimmy goes, minor! He yells back at him, minor! Minor! Anyway, KH, he played, what is he yelling at me for? You know, what am I doing? Am I underage? He's calling me a minor? I, you know. Anyway, he was all confused. <laughs> Well, you know, Jimmy, when he got to the break, Jimmy hipped him to the right chords, you know, anyway. Jimmy was kind. You know what he did? He sat the kid down, he sat him at the piano, and he showed him the chord changes to Monk's Round Midnight, the correct chord changes, you know, anyway. Now, think about that. You know, he was a kind guy, you know, he was a giant. He was a famous musician, and he could sit a kid down and help him out. How about that? Now, there you go. Well, here comes the KH. He doesn't like me telling these stories. I got to split. Bye bye. Hello, friends. Welcome to the Jazz Ranch, Hip Cats and Groovy Chicks. Welcome back. And I'm sorry for the alter dominant man. He butts in on my introductions and upstages me all the time. But anyway, that's a true story. Uh, I, I did experience that with uh, Jimmy Heath back in the day. Back then. Anyway, it was uh, a funny experience for him to be playing with me and yell back minor minor and I didn't know I thought he was talking about my fact that I was underage but anyway I didn't understand that he but he was very kind to me and I appreciate that so I'm glad that the uh, alter dominant man told you that story and there's many more believe me if you want to hear them just write to me so now here we go with um, I'm going to be breaking down a song by John Coltrane called Impressions which is a modal song in a modal key, in D minor, E flat minor, it's, it's similar to So What, uh, it's one of his uh, conic songs from the 60s, and I'm going to be talking about modal jazz in this video, so here we go now with Impressions. <laughs>
Now I'm going to be talking about modal playing and using pentatonic scales, which was made popular back in the late 50s with, of course, the revolutionary recording by Miles Davis called Kind of Blue, and specifically the song So What. And So What is very similar to this particular song that I played for you, which is Impressions by John Coltrane. It has the same sort of uh, chord change pattern of, of um, D minor for 16 bars, E flat minor for 8 bars, and then D minor for another 8 bars. And the D minor is really a D minor sus chord or pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic scale. And it w it's an interesting concept to understand and to learn, and it was big back in the, when it first came out in the, in the six, late 60s, well, actually, early 50s, um, what am I saying? Late 50s, 1959 was kind of blue, and then um, Pressions came out about the same time, or a little bit later than that, with John Coltrane. And actually, I heard Coltrane the first time, I think around 1964, at the Village Gate in New York City. And he did play Impressions, and um, they would play it, the song would last for like 40 mi 45 minutes or an hour, one song. <laughs> It would be like sort of getting uh, into a hip, hypnotic state. It would be transcending. It would be uh, a religious, spiritual experience to listen to it. Um, so that being an introduction, I'm going to get into the details of how to, um, you know, it's a little bit background on how to find the pentatonic scale in this song and what it's based on, the major pentatonic and the minor pentatonic, and how to play licks on them. I want to continue with a little bit of theory as a review. And of course, if you're an intermediate or advanced person, then this is, you know, already know this. If you're new, you might not know it. But anyway, we start out with the major scale, right? We know it's this. We're going to be in, we're in the, we're in the key of D minor now. So that's relative to F major. So I'm going to talk about the F major scale, which has one flat. So it'll be, you know, this is the scale, right? And that is actually, if you want to call it a mode, it's the F major scale, but it's also the Ionian mode. Now, if you're interested in modes, I have tutorials on those, so you can look those up. But go to my playlist and look up modes, and you'll see that. So if we take that scale and we take the sixth step of it, which is the Aeolian mode, is the sixth step of the major scale. We start on that note and play the same scale. We have the natural minor scale, which is now D minor. D minor natural minor scale or Aeolian. D Aeolian scale. Has the one flat in it, right? Now, just to review the other um, minor scales, and the scale that we're going to use in this particular song is Dorian. So Dorian means it's the second step of a major scale. So D is the second step of a C major scale. So I'm going to play a C major scale starting on D. Now what does that have? It has one, two, flat three, four, five, six, flat seven, and then one again. So it doesn't have that flat six in it. That's the important thing on the Dorian. We're going to be using the Dorian scale in this song and also a half step higher, which would be uh, E flat Dorian. Okay. Now, the other minor scales to take note of are the melodic minor, which will be, will be this. So it's different than the Dorian, see, because it has the, the natural seventh, you know, which belongs in the scale of D. You see, D major has that C sharp in there. So if we six, natural seven, that's the melodic minor, descends in the natural minor, and then the harmonic minor, which has the flat six and the natural seven. So that's interesting. Now we can use both of those, or all three of those scales actually in this song, but mostly I'm using the Dorian scale and the minor pentatonic, the D minor pentatonic, but I'm also using other pentatonic scales. The F major pentatonic scale, since we're in the key of D minor now, which is relative to F major, we need to know the major scale. So 
pen, major pentatonic scale, which is one, two, three, five, six. Penta means five, so it's five notes. One, two, three, five, six, and then one. So it's this. Notice that there's that interval of the fourth in there, and there's the interval of the fourth there. You see, so you have fourths have to do with uh, chordal harmony, which is um, what we're talking about. Modal harmony is chordal, means it's based on fourths, perfect fourths or augmented fourths. So the D minor, that's the F major. So the D minor would just be the one, two, three, four, five. Right? One, two, three, four, fifth mode of it, of that scale. We would start on the D and play the same scale. So we'll go D, F, G, A, C. So now what do we have in there? The root, the minor third, the fourth, the fifth, the flat seven, and the one. Now that gives us these intervals that are interesting. You get that sound. So I'm using that pentatonic scale. I'm also using the G pentatonic scale, which is this one, right? Now, why would I use the G pentatonic scale? Because I want, because in the Dorian scale, I'm going to have all these notes. So I want to use some of the notes that are not in the chord. Like I want to use maybe, the, I want to use that passing tone. I want to use that passing tone. I want to use that passing tone. So I'm, I can also use the G pentatonic scale like that, you know, which is relative to E minor. I don't want to go too fast here, but anyway. So I can use that as well. I did that. I did. Even though, you see, that sort of sounds like a passing tone, but it, it's in there. Now, you could also look at it as the C pentatonic. C major pentatonic, but starting on the second step. Oh, sorry, let's get that right. Right? There. But basically, I'm going to use two pentatonic scales. The D minor, which is this one. And then the G, or the E minor, which is this one. Okay, now I'll give you some licks and I'll look at it. I'm going to explore it a little further. You know, I think back in the late 50s, modal playing became popular because it was a new concept, you know. Other than that, before that, everything was all melodic, you know, based on the major scale and minor scales. Then, you know, they hadn't thought about those kind of intervals. And when Coltrane, well, Miles first, and then Coltrane came into it, and McCoy Tyner, started playing it, they were started playing all these kind of licks that were modal, you know, based on fourths and based on pentatonic scales. And, you know, it became a new sound. And so anything new is always interesting. So back in the 70s, 80s, this is what we were doing. We were playing that style more. Now things have come back to more melodic, you know, and chromatic type of things. And actually, when Chick Corea and Herbie Hancock took on to this, they, they used the modal concept, but they also used chromaticism and they used melodic, more melodic techniques of target tones and, and approach tones and so on, and combined it. And that's what I like to do. I, used, I like to use some modal techniques, but, but mix it up a lot. And um, so, you know, you would use... And then you would do... Chromaticism, maybe more melodic ideas. You know, you know so you use a variety of things. But you want to know the modal. You want to know the pentatonic scales and how to use them. And they're, they're very interesting. It's an interesting concept. Now I'm going to give you a few licks to look at and practice. And you're going to have an exercise sheet they'll be avail available on my website uh, you, that you can download. Um, and now to start out here with the left hand on the chordal voicings. Now chordal just means the fourth voicings. So fourth voicings would be, this is perfect force now. D, there's a perfect force. So this is the 
this particular song starts in D, so we can use all the notes that are in that scale, that Dorian scale, as roots, and then play chordal voicings like this. You know, we don't have to have that B flat in there. All those chords are going to work. You want to try that, you know. That's the interesting thing about this, is it's so versatile. That, that's the key word. It's so versatile in how you can use it. You know. and when you go up to the E flat now, you have all the black notes form a pentatonic scale. There's G flat major pentatonic, here's E flat minor pentatonic. You see, that's so interesting. And now you can use all those black notes in any way you like. possibilities it's endless now I have these all written out so you can do this one in other words I'm not going to play these for you now because it's too boring you know it, it, there's hundreds of these that you can play on these scales so look at the sheet start working on it on your own you can use the sheet to help you um, with these pentatonic scales and try using it and mixing it up with chromaticism so you can do it. Then you can do it. And maybe melodic stuff like melodic. So you mix these three elements up. The pentatonic scale, the Dorian scale, using it melodically, and using the chromatic scale. You see, when you get those three elements in there, now you have what Herbie and Chick are doing and all the modern pianists. Now I want to leave you with two important pieces of advice that I've learned over the years. And believe me, I've been around for a long time, so I've, I've learned some things. But anyway, one of the first things that I learned is that it is very important to make a recording of yourself playing and listen to it. And then when you listen to it, try to critique it and say, what, what would you like to improve about your playing? And then work at that to improve it and then record yourself again and listen and see if you have achieved that goal you know whether it be whatever it may be uh, maybe you're playing too many notes maybe you're not playing enough notes maybe you don't know, really know your scales in other words there's so there's so many categories of things that you could find uh, you could critique about your playing and and actually listen to the things that you like about your playing make notes about those and the things you don't like and then try to improve the things that you don't like and um, and then keep recording yourself and keep making improvements and over time you will get better I, I, this is one of the most important things I've ever learned now secondly and this is kind of uh, <laughs> contradicts what I just said in other words, the more you try to play well, the more you are, like, you know, striving to play well, the more, the, the more pitfalls that you will experience. Because trying too hard to do something is, is not going to work. It, 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 it's, your mind is too much uh, commanding you, and you're not involved in uh, your, your, your higher side, which is more relaxed and the higher side of your being is more connected with your feelings, your emotions, and your soul, I will say, and not your intellect. And so that, that is what you want to align with, you know, to become a better player. I mean, you need both. You know, you need intellectual, you need your intellect, but you also need your soul and your feelings and your passion. I mean, you need all of that to be a great player, great musician. And... Um, 
you know, not all of us have that. I mean, you might be more aligned with, you might be more of an intellectual type of person, or you might be more of a feeling type of person, not intellectual. So, you know, you have to kind of bring those two parts of your personality together. And I'm sure there's many more of those, and please write to me, those, those authorities out there that know what I'm talking about, write to me and help me out with this, because I'm trying to explain it in a way the best I can. But um, I found that um, the more I forget about trying to play well and just try to be aligned with my feelings and my passions and just to relax, that helps me to play better as a musician. I want to give you a quick look into my book, my jazz piano book, Methods and Songbook. It's for professional playing. I have two volumes here. It's in a three-ring binder. Makes it very practical. You see the three rings now. It lies flat on the music stand. You can take pages out for photocopying. And here in, in volume two, chapter 23, basic jazz improvisation, the major modes, application of the major modes, and so on. Everything is in this uh, book is listed in order of difficulty, from beginner to intermediate to advanced. And here's chapter 24 in volume 2 on scales for improvisation. All the important scales you need to learn, major scales, minor scales, dominant scales, pentatonic scales, they're all in here, you know, all the important ones, and how to use them, how to apply them. And the here is reharmonization and substitution chords and so on. So you're going to learn a lot from the book as well as from my video. So you want to have both. You want to have my videos and my book to have the complete resource for my teaching. I do want to mention that I make this book available to anyone that wants it, whether you can afford it or not. You know, if you can't afford it, then I ask you, what can you pay? And whatever you can pay, I, I will give you the book, at least the download version of it, the PDF. So just write to me, and we'll talk about it. But I want anyone that uh, wants my book to be able to have it, and I will give it away if, 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 if you need that. So um, please write to me, and we'll talk about that. Signing off from the Jazz Ranch, and, you know, you're all welcome here. Well, the horses are lining up to give sleigh rides, so please come up here now. It's Christmas time, and uh, I want to wish you good cheer. Please watch my Christmas videos. I'll have a link at the bottom of this video for my Christmas videos. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please write to me. I love to hear from you, and I always respond. You, you will see if, if you uh, watch my videos that I do leave responses to all my comments. And thanks so much for watching, and I love to hear from you. So here we go now with my final sign-off from the man upstairs there, Hermie Dressel, looking down at us with pity, but wishing us happy holidays, and he's saying, swing loose, and we'll see you next time around. Bye-bye.